the 2016 Buick Envision. Now this is Buick's all new mid-size luxury crossover. It's got some major competition ahead of it if it wants to be competitive in this segment. And yes, this is the first Buick to be built in China. I'm Jay and welcome to this latest episode of Carbos and Boxing Reviews. I want to thank Woodland Motors for letting us come on down and film this for you today. So Buick, yeah, you know, just a few years ago during GM's whole bankruptcy, Buick was nearly killed off. I've mentioned this before and basically GM executives told the White House that look at Buick is a profitable brand, at least in China, and we have the ability to bring rebadged Opals over to the U.S. and take advantage of our Chinese design offices to make Buick profitable and will continue to do so. And look, this is the results that you're seeing today. Now, just so that you know, the Envision slots in between the compact Encore crossover and the three-row Enclave. So basically, this car's competitors are going to be the likes of the new Lexus RX, the Acura RDX as well. So, But I'll get to the competitors more uh, in detail in a few minutes here. Now, just so that you know, the Envision, it rides on the same front-wheel drive-based platform as the just-unveiled 2018 Chevrolet Equinox. That's not even on sale yet. And I'm assuming that the next-generation GMC Terrain will also be built on this platform as well. And this is... So that you know, a two-row crossover, it is not three row, three rows. If you want a third row, you're going to have to upgrade to the larger Enclave. But I think Buick made the absolutely right decision not to give this a third row. It would have been just squashed in the back, borderline useless. But the advantage is you got a lot of cargo space and just a generous amount of overall interior space. Now, this leather interior color, it's called light neutral, it has ebony accents. And the, the quality, I have to say, is excellent. Um, this goes with all new GM products today. Uh, the automaker has just done such a good job of shedding its old GM image. And yeah, you can compare the quality here to the best from Japan. And I say that with a lot of pride, too. Now, Buick has also equipped this with what it calls its quiet interior tuning. And <laughs> let me tell you, this is a dead quiet interior no matter what type of road conditions you're on, that's a huge compliment. You also have eight-way driver and passenger heated seats, heated rear seats, 60-40 split folding rear seats, driver seat with memory settings, Bose premium seven-speaker audio system. Now, so that you know that this is the premium trim. Now, it was interesting. For 2016, when the Envision first came out, Buick decided only to offer the upgraded Premium and Premium 2 packages. Now, the lower base trims are being launched for 2017, which means that this car is nearly fully loaded. The only thing our tester here is missing uh, with the Premium 2 packages are the cooled front seats, heads-up display, automatic parking assist, and articulating high-intensity discharge or HID headlamps. Other than that, this thing here is very fully loaded. And from the driver's seat, yeah, this is a very comfortable place to be. Uh, Buick knows exactly who its target audience is here with this. And yeah, I'm going to say it, a lot of soccer moms. I remember when the uh, three-row crossover uh, Enclave came out back in, I believe, 2008. And suddenly that just became the, 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 the trendy vehicle among soccer moms. And it was a big crossover. And they were ditching their Dodge uh, Grand Caravans and, let's say, Chrysler Town & Countries for that three-row crossover, but it was kind of big, and the Encore subcompact crossover, actually based on the same platform as, get this, a Chevrolet Spark, um, it's a, or Chevrolet Sonic, excuse me, it's actually kind of small, and so I think this Envision has a lot of potential as a mid-size crossover. Now here you have this 8-inch uh, uh, infotainment screen system. This is a part of GM's IntelliLink radio and navigation system. And yeah, I really like it. I've complimented GM before on giving its vehicles or its touchscreens large icons. And I think that really does come in handy, especially for the driver and front seat passenger. They don't accidentally tap the wrong button. And yeah, it's overall very intuitive and I like it. Now, this car also comes with a lot of standard connectivity features, such as OnStar, XM Radio, but you need a subscription for that. It's free for the first six months, I believe. It's got a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, and also standard, standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I think that's like 
that should be standard in almost any new car today, whether it's luxury or not. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they're just, it's just a part of what new cars are today. Ah, so the automatic climate control. Now, this is a tri-zone automatic climate control. So the two front seat passengers can control it as well as the rear seat. And I think that's really nice. It should be at least tri-zone in a luxury crossover. So let's talk safety here. Now, of course, because government regulations are so high these days, all new cars are safe. They either get four or five star uh, crash test ratings from the US government. I've never really seen anything new today get anything less than four stars. Uh, and this uh, Envision, it's so new, it hasn't even officially been crash tested by the US government, but it does come standard with driver and front passenger airbags, including knee airbags for both of those passengers, uh, front and rear seat mounted side impact airbags, head curtain airbags, a 360 degree camera, adaptive cruise control, ABS brakes, stability control with traction control, rear vision camera, blind spot, uh, blind, blind spot zone alert with lane change alert, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, uh, rear cross traffic alert, and tire pressure monitoring system. So yeah, you get just about every safety feature out there in this today. Ah, this is cool. Dual panoramic sunroof. I love it. It is optional. It costs about $1,500, but yeah, I, I would totally go for it. I love these things. It really uh, lightens up the interior, and uh, we're starting to see these on more, you know, base crossovers, such as a Kia Soul, which comes with a panoramic sunroof for about $27,000, $28,000. So how does this drive? Well, I will say this, and Buick engineered this for a reason. It's just very, very quiet. It's a very good ride quality. And because of that, you, you have to give up something, and that's the sportiness and the steering. The, the steering, it, it's rather dull, but that's what I think uh, Buick buyers or these Envision buyers are going to want. They, they don't want a sporty crossover if they did there's the bmw x3 for an example this car is just supposed to be plain jane vanilla went on the road and this is also nice from the driver's seat you also have an additional eight inch lcd uh information display in the gauge cluster here now this is really really nice for an example audi is putting these lcd screens in its gauge or gauge clusters too but those are like 12.3 inches this is 8 inches, and yeah, I, I think 8 inches is just fine. Notice the clarity of the colors here. This is just, this is really nice, and I can't wait to see more mainstream, non-luxury cars come with screens just like that. That should be happening next year or two. If that, That's just my prediction. Now, another nice feature that uh, Buick engineers uh, put into this when uh, coming up with how, you know, the character of its driving is that the stop-start system has been programmed to be less aggressive when it shuts down. Therefore, it's less annoying for the driver. And yeah, if anybody who's had or has a stop-start system in their car right now, sometimes I, this is just for me, I've experienced a lot of annoyance with it. I, I don't like that it's loud when it shuts down and then when I tap the gas again, it starts right up. And I, again, I, I just find that annoying and you can't always deactivate it. You cannot, let's be clear, cannot deactivate it in this vehicle here, but instead Buick's engineers just made it less quiet, less aggressive. So I want to talk to you now about what powers this thing. Well, for 2016, the only, again, like I mentioned, offer the top trim levels, but the base engine that's going to be available probably right now as the 2017s are rolling into dealerships is a 2.5 liter inline four. Now it has 197 horsepower and 192 pound feet of torque. Okay. It's, it's an okay engine, um, but it's not very powerful it's slow to accelerate so i'll get to this car's engine in a moment and that's going to be the one you want and as you can see here rear seat yeah this is quite roomy 
you have that, like I said, its own uh, automatic climate control. You can recline the seats. Like I said, there are also 60-40 split folding. Plenty of leg and knee room, headroom as well. Also standard is this electronic lift gate. Now, we're seeing this on so many vehicles today. I just did an unboxing review of the uh, new GMC Acadia Denali. I also did one the Cadillac XT5. Those are, yes, they're luxury, but they also have those electronic lift gates as standard. And I'm really glad that they didn't try to squeeze that third row of seats in. That would have just been plain stupid. Because look what you get in return. A lot of cargo space. Total of 27 cubic feet of it. And yeah, fold the seats down. There you go. Even more. And I think this is one of the Envision's strongest selling points. Just how much interior space there is for a midsize crossover. Sometimes these midsize crossovers in terms of overall interior storage and head and knee room for passengers, it, it, it varies. And Buick nailed it here. And like I mentioned before, this is the first Buick, or actually of any car, of any U.S. domestic brand to be built and imported from China. There you go. Ah, this engine. Now, this is the optional engine. You're going to want this. The 2-liter turbo four-cylinder. Total 252 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to a 6-speed automatic with a manual shifting mode. That 6-speed automatic is also the only uh, transmission offered in the base 2.5-liter inline four. Now, power is sent to all four wheels in uh, an all-wheel drive system. And you can only get all-wheel drive with the Turbo 4 right here. So, Turbo 4, standard all-wheel drive. But let's listen to the engine. Okay, so performance, 0 to 60 miles per hour in a respectable 8 seconds, top speed, yeah, they say around 120 miles per hour, but I don't think any uh, Envision buyers are uh, real speed demons here. But as I was mentioning about the all-wheel drive system, now, the standard all-wheel drive system uh, in the Turbo 4 that you see here, it isn't the same as the optional one found in the base 2.5. Now, this is the upgraded all-wheel drive system, and it's similar to the one used in the GMC Acadia and the Cadillac XT5, whereas 100% of the available torque can be sent to either the front or the rear axle, as opposed to the optional all-wheel drive system in the 2.5 Envision, only 70% of that power is being uh, distributed to the wheels. So, yeah, I, I, I do think this is the better all-wheel drive system, and it is the better engine. So, if your budget allows, go for it. And the overall exterior styling, yeah, you know, when I first looked at it, I liked it, but the more I kept looking at it, the more boring I kind of just felt it was. I like this front grill, the, the waterfront, uh, waterfall grill as Buick uh, calls it. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's the best part to it. The rest of this car, it's, it's nice, but it's not a standout. So what's its competition? Well, as I already mentioned, you uh, have the BMW X3, the Audi Q5, but I think those are, yeah better drivers crossovers. I think this is more in line with the uh, Lincoln MKX, the Acura RDX, uh, and the Lexus RX. Now, all those start in the low to mid $40,000 range, and they top off anywhere from the high 40s to the mid $50,000 range as well. So this car, now, for 2016, it had a base price of $42,070. Now, our car also had almost $2,400 worth of options, and combined with the $925 destination fee, Grand total right here is $45,380. Yeah, um, it sounds expensive, but then again, it, it fits right in there with all the other competitors in the midsize luxury crossover segment. However, for 2017, because the lower trim levels with the base 2.5 liter inline four engine are now available, the base price of the Envision has lowered to $34,065. So... Yeah, that's much more within a lot of people's budgets here. You're talking a difference of, well, over $10,000 between the nearly fully loaded one and the base model. But the difference with the base models, you'll have to deal with, you know, having the 
less powerful engine, uh, front wheel drive, that which is standard, and no leather seats. But for not much more, you can start getting those features. Okay, so what do I like? Now, very quiet ride. It's one of the quietest interiors for its segment, and that rear seat room uh, is very spacious, along with the cargo space, too. What don't I like? Well, that base engine is just lame. And this car just, it, it overall to me, it, it, despite a nice interior design, build quality is great. It just, it's almost soulless. Oh, and I also wish this had uh, paddle shifters. That would have been nice. But the bottom line is you're going to want the turbo 2.4 engine. It's livier, livier, and it has better acceleration, but it's still not sporty. It's a nice luxury crossover inside and out, but there's just zero wow factor. And it's just not a segment game changer. And I think Buick missed out on a good opportunity here. But overall, 2016 and 27 Buick Envision, they're nice midsize luxury crossovers. So I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions for me, just leave them in the uh, comments section below. And uh, any suggestions for future reviews, also leave them in the comments. See you next time.